Okay, we're continuing on today with chapter two, still working with uh, different parts of circles. Today we're going to be working with angles and arcs on circles. So angles and arcs, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle, pretty self-explanatory there, and whose sides are radii. So in this case, a central angle, the vertex would need to be E. We could have sides of EH and EG to make an angle there. The sides are both um, a radius and the angle or the vertex is a central angle. Then a central angle separates a circle into two arcs, a major arc and a minor arc. So in order to be a minor arc, it needs to be less than 180 degrees. A major arc will be more than 180 degrees. So in this case, we could look at GF as a minor arc. And in order to name the arcs, it's just like a line segment. You're going to name it with the two end points, but instead of a line over the top, you're going to put a curved arc over the top. So then if GF is a minor arc that's smaller than 180, we could say that CHG is a major arc, and major arcs will always be named by three points. The two at the end will be the two, the first and last letters that you name the arc with. So since C and G are the end points, then you would put a point from the middle. In the middle, same thing, you would put an arc over the three letters. Now if we did an arc that had four points, let's look at the one that has F, C, H, and G all on it, then you would put F and G as your first and last since they're the end points, and then you could put either C or H in the middle. Either way doesn't matter, so we could name it F, C, G, or F, H, G. So that's naming arcs. Some properties of central angles and arcs. The sum of the measures of the central angles of a circle is 360 degrees. So in this case, if we take angle HEC, CEF, FEG, and GEH, those four angles, and add them together, just like we've worked with in the past, that will add up to 360 degrees. The measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. So in this case, if we looked at arc GF, the, the measure of that arc, or the degree measure of that arc, is going to be the same as the angle measure of FEG. The measure of a major arc is 360 minus the measure of the minor arc. So if we looked at arc GF, if that was, let's say, 30, then FCG, this whole major arc, would be 360 minus that 30, so 330. Two arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding central angles are congruent. And then the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. So what that's saying is similar to when we learned about segment addition. So if we have A, B, and C on this segment, we know that AB plus BC is equal to the whole length of AC. So in the same way, looking at this, we could say that GF plus FC is equal to GC, that entire arc. So let's go ahead and do some examples here. Find each measure. So we know that angle SCR is 45 degrees, TCU is 60 degrees, SCQ is 90 degrees. So using that, we can find some missing angle measures. First, let's find SCT. So SCT, we're trying to find this angle right here. Now we know the diameter cuts, an eight, or cuts a circle in half. Half of a circle is 180 degrees. 
So if we know that we've got 45 and 60, we need to figure out what we're missing. So we can say 60 plus 45 is 105. Subtract that from 180, and that's going to give us 75 degrees. So angle SCT is 75 degrees. Next, SCU. If we know that SCT is 75 and TCU is 60, we're just going to add those together to get a measure of 135 degrees. SCQ, right here, it has a little box in there which tells us we don't even have to do any math there. We know it's 90 degrees. Then QCT. If we know that SCQ is 90 degrees and SCT is 75, we can add those together. 90 plus 75, which gives us 165 degrees. So just finding missing angle measures there. Next, we're going to find the measure of arcs. So we know that BOA is 44 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and say 44 degrees and put a little arrow pointing to the angle we're talking about. Now, going way back to the beginning of the year when we talked about different relationships between angles, if we know that BOA is 44 degrees, then COD, those are vertical angles, meaning that they are going to be congruent. So we know COD is also going to be 44 degrees. So let's go ahead. First, we need to find the measure of arc BA. We learned up above some of those properties of arcs. A minor arc, the measure, or the measure of a minor arc is equal to its corresponding interior angle. So if BOA is 44 degrees, then arc ABA or AB is going to be 44. Now these, we do not include degrees for our answer. Next, BC. Again, we know that, so BC is this arc right here. We know that the diameter cuts it in half. So the, this ABC is going to be 180. If AB, that portion of it, is 44, then we can say 180 minus 44 which will give us 136 for BC. Next, CD. Again, COD is 44 degrees, which means CD will be 44. ACB. So we're looking at this major arc that goes from A through C all the way to B. We know the whole circle is 360. So we can do 360 minus that minor arc of 44, which will leave us with 316 for ACB. BCD, right here, we can look at it two ways. We already found that BC was 136. So we can either do 136 plus CD, which we found was 44. Or we can just look at it and say we know that BD is a diameter. The diameter cuts the 360 in half, which means it will be 180. Then the last one, AD. Again, because these angles are congruent, they're vertical angles, that means BC and AD will be the same. BC we knew was 136, so AD will also be 136. So that was finding the degree measure of an arc. Next, on the next slide, we're going to learn how to find the actual length of the arc. So instead of the degree measure, now we're going to be working with the arc length. So an arc is a part of a circle, and its length is a part of the circumference of the circle. So we're going to quickly walk through this example together. Um, in circle R, Angle ARB is 135 degrees. So this angle 
is 135 degrees and RB is 8. And it tells us that AC is a diameter. We need to find the length of arc AB. So on the last one, we were talking the keywords here, whether it asks you to find the degree measure or the measure of the arc or the length of the arc. If they were asking us to find the measure of the arc, it's pretty easy. The corresponding is ang angle is 135. So the arc, the measure of the arc is 135. But they say find the length of AB. So in order to do that, we know that the formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius or the diameter times the radius. So in this case, we know that RB is a radius, which is 8, so we would do 2 times 8 times pi, which gives us 16 pi. Sorry, board stopped working here. So again, we know that circumference is going to be 16 pi. So in order to find the length of arc AB, we are going to write a proportion to compare each part to its whole. So this proportion right here is what we are going to be using on our example problems moving forward. And the proportion is the length of the arc that you're trying to find over the circumference. So the ratio of the part of the circle to the whole circle is equal to the degree measure of the arc over the degree measure of the circle. So in this case, the length of AB we don't know, so we can use L, we can use X, whatever we want, over the circumference, which is 16 times pi, is equal to the degree measure of the arc, which since this angle measure is 135, that's what the measure of the arc would be over the degree measure of the entire circle, which is 360. So then once we cross multiply there, we would then end up with the length or the missing part is equal to 16 pi times 135 divided by 360, which gives us six pi. You guys can give your answer that way or you can actually do your multiplication and division here and just round your answers to the nearest hundredth. So that would be 18.85 units. Let's go ahead and do a couple of these together. So again, this ratio is going to be key here. I would make sure that you get this written down somewhere so you can easily come back to it. Um, a shorter way of writing this, instead of length of AB over circumference, you could say arc over circumference is equal to measure of arc over measure of circle. So in this case, we know for one and two, we're going to be using blue because they have, they both have angle DOE being 120 degrees. So for DE, we are supposed to find arc DE if we know that angle DOE is equal to 120 and we know that the diameter is 24 units long. So our diameter right here is 24. So again, we're going to do the arc, which is what we're trying to solve for, over the circumference, which will be 24 pi, is equal to the degree measure of the arc, which is 120, over the degree measure of the entire circle, which is 360. So then we want to cross multiply, which will give us 360x is equal to 24 pi times 120. And then we're going to divide both sides by 360. And we would get that x is equal to 24 pi times 120 over 360. So 24 pi times 120 
divided by 360. Again, we want to round to the nearest tenth or hundredth, either way. Um, I'm going to go with tenth here. We would get an answer of arc DE is equal to 25.1. We're working with units. So our answer would be 25.1 units. So let's go ahead and do another one of those. This time, again, we know that DOE is 120 degrees. We're trying to find arc DEA. So in this case, DEA. We're trying to find this whole major arc right here. So we know, again, we're saying X, the arc that we're solving for, over the circumference, which is 24 times pi, is equal to the degree measure of the arc. The degree measure of the arc, we know DE is 120 and EA is 90. So that means DEA will be 120 plus 90, which gives us 210 over the measure of the circle, which is 360. We cross multiply. I'm not going to write out all of these steps this time. I'm just going to go ahead and do my 24 pi times 210. Then I need to divide that by 360. And that gives me an answer of 44 units. So again, the difference between what we did on the last slide and what we're doing here is on the last slide we were finding the degree measure, which means we didn't have to have a label. This time we're actually finding the length, and since we're using length, we have to have a label. So let's do two more of these. This time we know it tells us that angle COB is equal to 45. We still have our diameter of 24. So this time, let's go ahead and try and find BC. So we know we're trying to find that arc length. It's over the circumference, which is 24 pi, is equal to, we're trying to find BC. Its interior angle is 45. Over 360, we cross multiply, so 24 pi times 45, divide that by 360, and it gives us an answer of 9.4 units. And one more, this time we're trying to find CBA. So we know that BE is a diameter, meaning the whole thing is 180 degrees. If this part is 90 degrees, that means BOA is also 90 degrees. So for CBA, the interior measure is 135 degrees. So X over 24 pi is equal to 135 over 360. 24 pi times 135 divided by 360 gives me 28.3 units. So that's finding the length of an arc given the diameter of the circle and one of the angle measures. Now the last thing we're going to be doing here is again the diameter of P, so we're given the diameter, it's 15 units long. So we can say that that length right there is 15 units. And then we know that SPT is congruent to RPT. So this angle and this angle are congruent. So using that, we're going to find the length of each arc for the given angle measures. So similar to what we were doing up above. Here, we're trying to find RT if SPT is 70 degrees. So if SPT, this angle right here is 70 degrees, and we're trying to find RT, we need to know the interior angle measure for TPR. 
since this one is, what was it, 70 degrees, and these are congruent, that means this one will also be 70 degrees. Sorry, computer went to sleep. So again, we know that since this angle is 70 and these two are congruent, this one will also be 70. So again, we're going to set up that same proportion. X, the arc we're trying to find, over the circumference, which is 15 pi this time, is equal to 70, the degree measure of the arc, over the degree measure of the entire circle. Cross multiply, 15 times pi, or 15 pi times 70, divided by 360, would give us an answer of 9.2. Again, since we're finding a length, you need to use a label there. All right, let's do the next one then. Find NR if RPT is 50. So if we know that RPT is 50 and we're trying to find NR in this case, if RPT is 50, that means SPT is also 50. We know that these three angles together add up to 180. If these two are both 50, that means that they add up to 100. So we can say SPT plus TPR, which is 50 plus 50, is 100 degrees. So for that missing part, we're going to do 180 minus 100, which gives us an angle measure of 80 degrees. So using that, we can say in order to find arc NR, it's going to be x over 15 pi is equal to its interior measure of 80 over the entire circle, which is 360. So 15 pi times 80 divided by 360 gives us 10.5 units. Two more of these. This time we need to find MST. So MST, MT is a diameter, meaning that it cuts the circle in half, so the degree measure is going to be 180. So here we can go ahead and just set it up. X over 15 pi equals 180 over 360. 15 pi times 180 divided by 360 is going to give me 23.6 units. So again, that one we got our 180 because MST is half the circle, meaning it's 180. And the last one here. We need to find MRS, so MRS, this whole major arc if MPS is 140 degrees. So MPS is 140. That means in order to find the degree measure of MRS, it's going to be 360 minus 140, which gives us 220. So X, the arc length over the circumference, 15 pi, is equal to the measure, the degree measure of the arc, which is 220 over the whole circle. Cross multiply one more time, 15 pi times 220 divided by 360 gives us 28.8.
So again, the key here as you're working on today's assignment is going to be making sure you pay attention whether they're asking you to find the length of each arc like we did on this slide or whether they're asking you to find the measure of each arc. If it's the measure, it's just going to be equal to whatever the interior angle is. If you're trying to find the length, you need to use our proportion right here. Your homework today is going to be the 10.2 worksheet, which is up on Google Classroom for you. Um, again, up to you whether you want to do it on a piece of paper and just take a picture of the paper and submit that for your homework, or you can do your work on a piece of paper and then put your answers on a Google Doc and just turn in that doc with your answers. I will take either way, um, whatever is easiest for you. Keep working hard. Let's finish out these next few weeks, month or so, of the school year pretty strong here.